So James over at Wrestling Shoot Interviews had a fun little sit-down interview with Al Snow this week, who is a wrestling traditionalist, to say the least. You know, he's very uh, very set in his ways, even though he was the guy carrying around a mannequin's head and doing hardcore matches forever and stuff. He is a wrestling old-school meat-and-potatoes kind of guy at heart. And he had a particular take while talking with James over at Wrestling Shoot Interviews about the wrestlers nowadays look like they're the fans that come over the railing, they hop over the other side, and they get in the ring. And I do have a whole lot to say about this. Uh, Very mixed opinions. A lot to add to this. But first, uh, let's check out this clip, and not, not just a clip about the, the wrestlers looking like the fans these days, but also just should there be a qualification to become a pro wrestler these days? He makes the point. Plumbers have licenses. Hairstylists have licenses. But any old fucking, yeah, fucking video store clerk can throw on a pair of spandex and fucking hop in the ring and take bumps. Check out this clip. A lot of independent wrestling locker rooms looking around the locker room and one, no ifs, ands, or buts. This is an aesthetic, cosmetic business. And meaning that when you walk through that curtain, physically, visually, you better be able to convey to an audience an ability to believe that you can whip somebody's ass, that you make your living in a competitive combat situation. Well, let's face it. There are a lot of people that are in this business right now that do not even remotely look like that. Okay. But I get it. That's fine. You know, I, I'm not judging as far as a uh, physical appearance, but again, let's make no mistake. This is a physical appearance business. That's, that's how it works. You know, I didn't make the rules, you know, I don't care how you look. Here's my problem. My problem is, is that you're physically in no actual real condition to safely and respectably go in the ring and perform on a level that allows you to protect yourself and your opponent. That's my issue. That's my problem. Because regardless of what you might think as far as, oh, wrestling's fake, it is still very much a very intense athletic endeavor that you're going out and performing. And now you're going to do it, and in about eight minutes, you're going to want to try to do that cool spot you saw recently on your New Japan video. And you're going to want to do it, and you're too blown up to safely and effectively do it. And one of you might potentially, again, back when we had the conversation about Darren Drozdov, suffer a life-altering or life-ending injury. And then what I really got to thinking about it, because in the United States, we have numerous vocations that or require a license to perform. If you're a beautician, you've got to go to a state accredited training facility for even if you just want to cut hair, all right? Or you want to work on dead people. And what's the risk of you injuring a dead person? Who cares? They're dead, all right? You've got to go to a state accredited school, be taught by a state accredited approved teacher. You have to complete a certain number of state required hours. You have to then complete a certain number of resident hours, meaning you have actual hands-on experience performing the work. And then and only then do you get to take a test to get a license to pursue that vocation. In professional wrestling within the United States, we've got numerous athletic commissions. We've got them all over the country. The requirement for you to be a licensed professional wrestler is in most states, you just take a physical and then you pay your money, you're done. That's it. There are no standards. All of the people that were in the stands now have a a means of egress to go right out of the stands, over the rail, and they get into the ring. And and the wrestling business has suffered for it. (sighs) That's... uh... Look, I get where he's coming from, especially as like an old school meat potatoes guy, as I said. Like, I get why I get I get the I don't disagree, but at the end of the day, wrestling is entertainment. It's not a service to the public, per se. You know, when you're cutting someone's hair, you can fuck someone's hair up. 
When you're fixing someone's car, you can fuck someone's car up. And then the fucking engine can fall out of the bottom of it while they're driving down the road. I legit had a fucking, I had somebody do my bread, a Midas, a, a, a Midas shop. Fucking, it's a franchise, I believe. You know, it's everywhere, but it's different independent owners. And fucking, uh, the fucking tire came loose. They did my brakes and they didn't fucking tighten the, the lug nuts. So I'm going down the highway and the tire came loose. Lucky it didn't fall off, but I felt it kind of wobbling, wobbling loose and it did a little bit of damage and they ended up uh, chipping in their fair share to get that taken care of. So, you, I mean, they're servicing the public is what I'm saying. And that should require a license of some sort. A wrestler, a they're putting on a show at the end of the day. It's not a sport. Yes, it's full contact, and I get. So just to finish my thought, and then I'll dive in more of the nuance of what Al's talking about. Uh, you know, like a rock band, you know, you don't have to get a license to go play a, a bar gig down the street. You know, the local bar cover band, they don't need a license to do that. You don't need a license to do an open mic at stand-up comedy. You shouldn't need a license to put on a professional wrestling show. However, uh, you know, look, the wrestlers are the marks these days. I, it's 100% true. Look, I, I'm right there with them, you know. Uh, my time in professional wrestling was me marking out about it the whole time. Oh, my God, there's Eugene. Oh, my God, there's Daddy Ass. Oh, my God, there's Raven. Oh, my God, there's X-Pac. Too sweet me. Um, you know, just a fucking mark. So I get it. And, and the locker room is filled with a lot of marks, but it, it always has been, hasn't it? The difference is that, you know, you have to be a wrestling fan. Well, I, I take that back because there's a lot of just general, like, tough guys that got into the business because of their football injury or they were bouncing people at the bar, and somebody thought they had a good look. So, I mean, there's those stories, too. But back in the day, there was more of a qualification to get into the business. Uh, you know, when you look at, like, when a Hulk Hogan started, they would break a motherfucker's leg just for thinking about, oh, you, oh, you, pretty boy. Oh, you think you got nice big muscles. You want to come on in and you want to be a professional wrestler, huh? That's your... That's what you want to do? Okay, step into the ring, pretty boy. Let's see what you got. Snap. Now get the fuck out of here and don't ever come back. Leave the wrestling, the grown-ups. But he came back. Oh. Well, this kid might have something. He's got guts. We like that. Now, that's an extreme example. I actually do not condone those actions. It's a bit much. Um, but I am all for, you know, the things where you, you know, they make you do 500 squats and run a fucking uh, so many miles and try to blow you up. And then they and then they stretch you and try to scare you away. And the tough ones, the ones who really, really want it, the ones that come back the next day might be the keepers. I, I believe in that policy. and I really do. Uh, I think it is too easy to get trained nowadays. Um <clears throat> you just go to a wrestling school uh, and the standards are low, I, especially on the independent level. There's a lot of skinny, bony people that, you know, you, you look at them from the crowd and you, you could know you could powerbomb the shit out of them, your fucking selves. And even in, in on AEW TV, and fucking Fuego Del Sol, you pick that guy up over your head and spin him around in circles if you want to could toss him out the ring like there's something to be said for that there should be i don't know i think it's just that the business has changed right i don't i, I was gonna say i maybe there should be some standards but i also don't believe in like restricting people from living their dreams i think people maybe need to be more realistic about their dreams not everybody can be a pro professional wrestler, or should be anyway. And look, these people aren't going to make it to the big time anyway. But when you go to any of your local indie shows, especially the lower quality ones, you're going to see some people that look like your fucking, uh, you know, your pool boy or something. 
it is what it is. It's and I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, and Al, the other nuance to what Al was saying is these guys have to be in shape enough to be able to still take care of you when they're winded and tired and can, you know, they need to be able to have the strength, the awareness, the fucking, you know what I mean? They have to, you're putting your life in people's hands when you're doing these stupid moves in these rings. Everybody's got to do their triple indie diver, right? The indie diver driver. 95 or whatever the fuck. Everybody's got to do the triple indie diver driver 95 to the outside of the ring through six tables stacked, uh, doors stacked up. You got to be able to handle that shit. Do your move if you want, I guess. But like, can you, can you hold the guy up and make sure you're not dropping him on his head when you're sweaty and tired? And he's sweaty and tired. Sometimes it's tough for the pros. Uh, so there should be some standards, but there's not. And that's just the way it is. That, that ship has sailed. Wrestling's a different business, you know. But those people aren't going to make it to the top. There's still standards for television. Um, yes, you see a lot smaller guys and light heavyweights. But you had guys like the cruiserweights back in WCW kind of kicked those doors open. ECW had a lot of little guys, all the vanilla midgets from Kevin Nash's day. You know, that was the start of it. But then you, UFC came along and, and the middleweights and the light heavyweights and the welterweights. And these guys were stars. Conor McGregor's like five foot four. You know what I mean? Floyd Mayweather, he's a little motherfucker. Like, people in real legitimate con- combat sports are, are, are kicking people's asses and putting on big shows. The best fights in UFCs are usually not the heavyweight fights. They're good. There's some bangers. And when a heavyweight hits you, it's kind of... it's, it's a, heavyweight, a heavyweight fight hits different. Make no mistake. You get two big meaty hosses out there. And people are going to be bleeding and hurting and breaking things. But some of these middleweights and lightweights, man, they, they can fucking go. And they're stars. Conor McGregor is going to be the biggest star of all time. Most likely. And even look at like a fucking the Diaz brothers and stuff like that. It's so None of these are big guys. So that changed the game too. It made it like people are now, people can now recognize a fit, athletic little guy as a legitimate badass wrestler. You know, you can look at a Zack Saber Jr. and go, "Oh man, he looks like a little feeble girl." But then you see all the pretzels that he twists people into and stuff, and it's like, okay, this guy's a fucking wrestling clinic, a walking wrestling clinic. You know, but I think for the upper echelon, there's still like a standard, and even like you see Will Osprey beef the fuck up. When I talk about like a Zack Sabre Jr., when Will Ospreay started, he wasn't that feeble, but he was a smaller guy too. He has beefed himself up to heavyweight. Uh, Cody Rhodes was a guy that put on a lot of muscle before he went to WWE too. You know, he had been slimmer at one point. Not slimmer like the gut, but a smaller frame. You know, these guys are bulking up and they're getting that main event push ski. But it's okay. It's okay to be smaller. So... I get what Al Snow is saying, and he has a lot of points. I just think it's a different business now. Similar with the Jim Cornette folks. It's a different business. That ship has sailed. We're not Believability is not the name of the game anymore. Entertainment is the name of the game. The thing has shifted. We're not trying to make you a believer. We're trying to put on a good show. Period. End of story. For some matches, believability is key. For other matches... It's a funny fucking, it's a goofy, silly thing. You know what I mean? All of it fits to, you know, you can have Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville with giant mouse traps and giant hand spots and stuff like that. Like, fine. I don't care. Just, you know, keep your main event world title matches serious. Keep the credibility there. Give me a bunch of that, and you can break the tension, you know, when you're building the roller coaster. we got to take things down a little bit. Give me something sticky. It's fun. It's fine. I'm okay with it. Doesn't have to be serious and believable. That ship has sailed. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think of what Al Snow had to say? Good points? Not so good points? 
Grumpy old man yelling at clouds. What's your take? Let me know. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next. Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel, dude. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother.